Hello, dear friends. Here we are. Yes. This is the countdown to the 12th U.S. Spiritus Symposium. It is a joy, and we are only 13 days away. I can't believe it either. The time is coming about when we're completing a 12-year cycle of these beautiful meetings that have been created with the purpose of bringing forth Spiritism in the United States, to all the different states, different cities in the U.S. with our own efforts in the United States of America. There is nobody in this world that is more important than each one of us. Of course, there is nobody who is standing out in the love of God. Do you think Mother Teresa is more loved because she became Mother Teresa? Or the Dalai Lama is more loved because he's the Dalai Lama? I don't think so. I think it's the reverse. Mother Teresa probably loves God more than most people on earth. I think that uh, Divaldo Franco very likely loves God more than many people on the earth. But God loves you and I and them in the same way. How do I know? Law of equality. If you go to the Spirit's book by Alan Kardec, there are Kardec discloses the questions and answers in his dialogue with the superior spirits through the mediums of the time. In this beautiful exchange that is published in the third part of the Spirit's book, the laws, the divine and natural laws, one of them the law of, of equality. We're all equal, equal, equal in potential equal to be unfolded of course and equal in being loved by god unconditionally and god also does not love you and i more than you know uh when we were created and god's not gonna love us more tomorrow why attributes of god god doesn't change he doesn't think twice like uh oh I love Vanessa more because now she is finally understanding the right way of living. Uh, no. But I most certainly love God more today than yesterday. And probably you too. So all of us who are here are being invited tonight to celebrate the beauty of coming closer and Turning up the light inside and out. And the 12th U.S. Spiritist Symposium is certainly, certainly the way to go. Allow me, because our guest is just about to connect with us. Uh, and we're just a step away. You know, this is life. Life is life. There is no protocol. You know, at Kardec Radio, once when we started very responsibly, we used to have a very, not too tight, but a good outline for the programs. Right now, pretty much we got our hands on it, but we still do a major outline out of responsibility. Though this is informal, but there is responsibility. We cannot do everything unscripted thinking that we are uh, so good, so good, so good that uh, things just come by inspiration. No. Divaldo Franco himself, before he gives his talks, he has a mental outline of his talks. So he doesn't go there and say, I'm a medium, I'm going to speak whatever the spirits want me to speak. Every time I was with him and how to share and others who are responsible, they have a scripted outline. It, at least in their minds. Of course, if the spirits come and change the course of events for the better, they are flexible. Okay? So, also, um, we are here together and uh, I'm waiting for my friend to come in. And if just a millisecond here, Okay, so let us wait and see. 
Meanwhile, I want to bring your attention to the importance of the symposium by going back to this issue of the Spiritist magazine. If you go to issue 25, which is this one, okay, just go to spiritismagazine.org and you're going to find it. Uh, issue April, June 2014. We're going to find a summary of Chico Xavier in the United States of America in 1965, 1966. And we're going to find out how important it is to really make this happen in the English language. Chico Xavier very responsibly, he studied English. And he did all, all he could to learn English and also to even pay for his books to be published in the United States of America. I have the contracts, the photocopy of the contracts. And he also, um, also recommended his closest friends, including Salim Haddad, who was the one who co-founded the Spiritist Center in North Carolina, to do it all in English, always. And he used to exchange letters with Haddad, always saying, you know, it's very important that we do this in English. Don't give up. Keep on going and send me the literature since I cannot go back for now because he was overloaded with work in Brazil. He kept on being, informing himself of the English language he used to say to Haddad. Okay? So, if you go to this issue, 25, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the beauty, the beauty of these teachings that uh, are brought to us by Chico Xavier. In a minute, I have our friend right here with us. And I'm going to open the line for him. But if you go to the very editorial, a unique editorial, our Spiritist magazine revolutionizes the way you're doing editorials as well because this is not a standard magazine. But we summarized right here and now the Chico Xavier Haddad and the First Spiritist Center in the USA. And here says a summary of all the studies that Carlos and I did when we were there. This is just to go to the app of the Spiritist Magazine. If you haven't seen the app, there is an app of the Spiritist Magazine, which is free of charge. You just go there and you can see the issues and read it free of charge. Or, or you can go to the website, spiritismagazine.org. Buy your copy through our partner HP MacLeod, or you can read through the PDF that we make it available. Okay, to talk about the beauty of the Spiritus Symposium, which is solely in English, there are no translations. We we count on the efforts of the people who are doing the bread and butter of the Spiritist Movement in the United States and our hats to each one of them because they are courageous, they are brilliant. Only God knows what they do each and every day to make this happen. And for the and for the United Spiritist the United Spiritist uh, uh, United States Spiritist Federation, our hats as well for the capped this beautiful effort up and running and always improving, always progressing and boosting it around the country. So who is here with us? A person who has been also on the behind the scenes and, and, and is going to be at the symposium this year again to help out. Who is he? Adriano Barbo, how are you? Hello, Vanessa. How are you? How are everybody? Thank Good you, to Adriano. Hear you all. Thank you for being with us, Adriano, from the Mount Vernon Spiritist Center, upstate New York. The Mount Vernon Spiritist Center, right, Adriano? 
turned 10 years last year together with the Inner Enlightenment Spiritual Society, with the Texas Center, with the Center in San Diego, and also with the Center in Virginia, and there may be others. And you, we were just talking about these efforts of making of, of the Spiritism in the United States. And you, I remember, Adriano, when you embraced the cause also in the English language. Would you like to share with our friends a little bit about how important it is and how you, you, you really made this effort to embrace Spiritism in the English-speaking language? Sorry, I guess you had something going on here. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it was a great challenge and it still is a great challenge. And, um, I guess the greatest challenge is um, there is no many uh, speaking American uh, participants, and uh, it's because there is more Brazilian speaking uh, Portuguese on the center. It's always, uh, you know, the force against the English, uh, you know, work. So there's always this excuse that uh, there is not enough uh, uh, Americans or other uh, nations that that is speaking English to the center. So they say, ah, oh, you know, you have this study group, you have these uh, lectures, but you see there's not many coming and sometimes there's no one. And then, you know, you have always to listen to them and say, you know, let's be patient. Let's do it in English anyways, because we are not denying the need of the, the Brazilian or other nations as well. It's just that we want to give each one a share of our effort, but it's not, not always easy. I guess it's, it's not to do the, the, the work in English itself is not that difficult for, for, for me personally in the Spiritual Center. The greatest difficulty is to convince and gather help of other people to join the work. So that's the greatest challenge. But I guess uh, every step uh, you know, that we go ahead is a victory and um, it's worth doing it anyway, even there Maybe. is so many people contrary to the, that what we do. I know, Adriano, I am not saying this, but to encourage everyone, you know, I remember when you started it and the much that you have been helped. And I remember how often we bring you to Washington, D.C., to our group in D.C. or to our center in Virginia. And I remember how many times you made people cry or really joyful and feel encouraged by sharing your own experience and how you're working it. And, you know, the other day, Adriano, I watched uh, the Dalai Lama give a very uh, a speech in the commencement ceremony of the University of San Diego. And it made me feel more admiration for him because his humility and for speaking in English, though he's not as fluent as he is in his own language, but yeah. he made an effort and I've heard everybody whom I saw him speaking or whom I talked to about the video, they say, you know, I admire him more now because he's making an effort and people really value it. You know, this idea that we needed to be as fluent as I think is out of humility. So, and talking about humility, you gave a talk last year about humility and the power of will based on the mm -hmm. book Thought in Life. So thought is life. Where there is a will, there is a way. 
And here you are, Adriano, right? So Thank you've been you. to other spirit symposium opportunities too, right? The one in Connecticut or... Yeah, uh, yes, I did. I did in New York, I did in Connecticut, I did in, in Boston as well. They all uh, had been a great experience for me. You know, um, I didn't help a lot. <laughs> I, I confess I did my best. <laughs> but I really admired, uh, you know, the, the the people that work at most, uh, the speakers, the, uh, especially the people that work behind the scenes that no one sees them, but they are running around, they are getting ideas, they are really, uh, you know, spending a lot of hours that we don't know, you know, to fit in one day uh, event like this. The, you know, the whole uh, group of people that work together for that, they, they must have put, who knows, many hours, you know, countless days together for one day of event. And um, sometimes the people that goes and, you know, rips, the, you, know, the, you know, the greatness of the event, uh, they don't even think, you know, how much work have been put together for for them and I guess is more people would at least participate a little bit getting to you know behind the scenes they would appreciate more when they go to events like this um, and for me you know going to this few uh, symposiums and, and getting to know the people that work behind the scenes before the days and so forth helped me appreciate more the work um, of uh, the events like this. Yes, Adriano. You know, some people, they forget, you know, in spiritism, we study so much about humility. And uh, if we go back to Ben Franklin, when he was 20 years of age, and he said clear-cut to us uh, the importance of... Uh, practicing humility. He tried it himself in his 13 virtual list, right? He said how important humility is as a virtue to be achieved. And he said, uh, emulate Jesus and Socrates. Of course, Socrates, the, the philosopher. And for us in spiritism, we consider Jesus our guide and model. So, Humility was his first thing, so much so that Emmanuel, in one of his messages, talks about, and Euripides Barsanopo as well, talks about the manger as the ultimate lesson for us on the call for humility. He was born in the humblest of all places. And here we are. Sometimes I feel we lose sight when we are making these events of the importance of keeping things simple though organized and really sharing from the heart. So I think the United States Spirit Symposium is an opportunity for us to see that this is what happens in the U.S. We are the ones who are making this, the, the daily spiritist movement here. We're the ones who you and I and others who are daily working on this with the community here. And we appreciate the speakers who come from other states or other countries for their encouragement. But uh, when it comes to this national event, the beauty of it all is this beautiful exchange that happens on the behind the scenes. It happens on uh, on stage. It happens with the children and youth, all the educators who are there, and all and every volunteer who is preparing every single step for it to happen. So for those who are watching us here, like Andrea Torres from Illinois, and I, I, my difficulty in English is on grammar, but I will not give up because of, the poor teacher don't have enough knowledge for teaching property properly. 
Thank you very much. And but no matter what, we are here to try. So of the symposia that you participated, were there highlights that really made you feel like uh, more encouraged to go back to the center in Mount Vernon and do more? Oh, yes, there's a lot of things that um, helps me um, from the start. Uh, uh, the first thing that I appreciate is the, um, in the symposium, because I'm, I'm, I'm saying from the perspective of, of a person who is not only go there as a participant to see, you know, to rip up the, uh, you know, the lessons of these this speeches. I I'm as well in the center working daily with the struggles, the difficult relationships of, of you know the, the the volunteers and so forth. When I go to events like this, so there's so uh, many people working together despite our differences. You know, they they are able to coordinate uh, a whole day event with so many different you know um, activities, mm -hmm. and uh, and at the same time make it as as good as we we could see all the events. So um, in this perspective, I see that, you know, working in a center as well is inspired me to have more, you know, patience and more, you know, you know look for more skills to um, coordinate the people in the center and as well, you know, inspiring in the language itself. So... Um, I see so many people attending the event, despite it being in English, you know, for the, the Portuguese-speaking people. If we see event with 300 people, 200 people, is a good number of people. And uh, we see that, you know, despite the difficult of many people speaking in English, they still go. They still make effort to go and see the event. So it gives us, you know, the hope as well to come back. So in despite the difficulty that we face, we can count on people to come as we, as I could see all these, you know, these years that we've been as well in English. Uh, we, in, the, in, the, in the talks that we have, we have, uh, you know, mostly the same numbers of participants in English or Portuguese, a little less in, part in English, but uh, compared to the whole activities of the center is a good number. So in this perspective, going to the symposium, it helps me a lot in the center, you know, for more, you know, hope and patience <laughs> to wait the time and still work in English and of course, as well as the teachings, you know, the the the, the talks that the, the is being presented is good as well. And ideas, you know, the you know the the connectedness of the ideas it helps a lot. Um, plus, uh, you know, there is the share of feelings of fraternity, brotherhood, sisterhood. It all comes together that we feel good and we feel like nourished and filled with yeah. more, you know, uh, force or, or energy to, you know, spend ahead in more days and working. So it's a lot of things that helps me with these events. That, you know, not only Kardec Radio nourishes souls, the Spiritus Symposium does too. <laughs> But you're right, you're right. The exchange, you know, I remember scientific meetings and when I go to the Spiritist Symposium, I see the talks of others. I talk to people on the behind the scenes. They talk about their experiences in their centers or to new people who are coming in for the first time from different locations in this world. Not only Americans, not only Brazilians, but Colombians, Puerto Ricans, all different uh, nationalities. They come and uh, we feel like, wow, it's like a scientific meeting. You come and exchange and you learn and you share and we come back. We're like more our minds open. We need it to open our minds 
we need to open our hearts, as you're saying as well, because there is this exchange that is the nourishment. And Adriano, this year, in the 12th U.S. Spirit Symposium, we're going to make it happen in Washington, D.C. It, the, the main, the, because it's a special year for the symposium, for our planetary transition, we are going to be discussing several topics that are so important from uh, family to the laws of loved ones, family planning, human equality, uh, ecology, like world sustainab sustainability, peacemaking skills, so important, so vital, mental health, that is going to be a whole round table on mental health, then sexuality, education for children and youth, plus the sessions for children and youth throughout the whole day, which is phenomenal. Because if you think about $10 per children, and they stay there being nourished in their souls and bodies from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., you cannot even pay an hour of a babysitter for $10 nowadays. So it's really a work of charity that the the symposium is making uh, at this time. Also to give parents an opportunity to learn while their children are also being nourished in the most optimal way. And I know you have a particular um, um, preference for education for children. You, you, you really love children. You really think how important it is to be diligent in delivering the Spiritist message to children, to youth. Would you like to talk to, to those who are watching us about how important this part of the symposium may be for these children and youth, Adriano? Well, yes. Um, for children and youth, um, first is um, it's a great opportunity for them to make new friends in the spiritual movement. So they feel a uh, sense of more, you know, national. <laughs> it's not only local thing for them. Yeah. I know just few friends in my center, just more local. I don't know nobody else from other states, and especially for teenagers. They like to feel like, in a way, more important. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're centers. So it's a good thing for them. And um, and I guess in this kind of uh, you know relationship that they 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 experience in the symposium because it's a whole day too, they have a lot of opportunities, especially for the teenagers uh, in this perspective, is that they will uh, be exposed to each other more time, so they they will have more time to uh, show their ex skills as well. You know, for example, in our center, if, you know, one of our teenagers go, he's good at music and, and playing theater and so forth. And that way he'll be able, you know, to connect with some others that will like music or it'd be, you know, with others that as well play music. And that way will be, you know, a connection between them and, you know, for the future times they have someone to chat on the internet, not only friends from school that doesn't share the same ideas as they share with the spiritist view. It's good for them because it, it, it strengthens their, their, their faith or their certainty in whatever teachings, in the teachings that they are receiving in the spiritist center. And as of course, the teachings itself that they are receiving in the symposium, you know, the, the lessons that we were provided for them will be a great help for them as well. And it works for the, 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 the smaller children as well, you know, for the little children, uh, five or, you know, the ages that they go. It's good for them as well to, to see that's numberless of children are spiritists as well in the United States. It's not their local, like, three, four children in a spiritist center. I guess 
if if I if I if I were six or seven or eight or ten years old, if I were in an event like this with so many children, I will feel much much more uh, uh, stronger in a sense of you know I'm in the right place and I I have a number less of children across the nations that share with me the same ideas. It's not only my parents there in Connecticut or in New York that have these crazy ideas about reincarnations, about spirits and so forth. There's, there's many people and it's just wide. It's, you know, from a perspective of a children, I mean, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot. Because sometimes when we just bring the children to the spiritual center home, spiritual center home, and doesn't make this connection of other centers, of other children that share the same ideas, they, they feel a little bit off isolated from the rest of the, the society, from the school. But being in an event like this so big, so, you know, imagine, you know, what kind of imaginations they might have and about the event, about the future of spiritism, about the future of themselves. If I were children uh, in an event like this, uh, of course I would go out there with big imaginations about, you know, whatever I have received in the class, the people that have met and so forth will grow inside of them, of course. And coming back to the centers will give them, you know, um, a lot of things to talk about, new friends, right. new people they met, and you know, and we will we'll share. And I guess the parents that are bringing the children to the to the symposium, uh, they are really investing in their family, and they invest in the future of their children. And, and I, I, they can't really evaluate the greatness of this. They will see. The, the 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 fruit they will see the the good consequence of it for, of course in the future and I can say very near future when they come back to the to their own centers local center they're gonna see you know the the kind of conversations they will share with their their friends in the center that didn't go then it's good besides of course the teachings yeah. that they receive there you're right and I tell you people love you Adriano and we love you too. We admire you. And you here represent today for all of us in the United States of America. And forgive me for saying, but for all those who believe that it's too hard to do it in English, that it's impossible, that it's a stretch, that it's just for the future. Here it is. I present to you the future. Adriano Bible is creating. I know the center still has activities in Portuguese, but it doesn't matter. Many big activities there are all in English, large events, and you also contribute to the English-speaking efforts in this nation. So our hats to you, I don't want to, it's not uh, about uh, pride, etc. It's about encouragement. That's why we're encouraging us, our dear soul, She's saying she wants to come. Please network so it's worthwhile. I tell you, I cannot recommend enough. And the importance of each and every one of us gathering together for the prayer. Not a Brazil is here. She's saying, when I lived in Brazil, I was nervous about my Portuguese, but everyone was so patient and helpful. Now it's a huge part of me. I never gave up because I really wanted to learn about spiritism. When I returned back home to the States, I was nervous that I wouldn't come across spiritism. I'm so grateful to find it in English, although it's beautiful to also study in Portuguese, even in Spanish. Thank you so much, Nora, for sharing this. And I agree, it's not about any language, but the language that most people speak in this world and in this country. It's undisputable. In both realms, majority of the people speak English and they won't understand anything if we don't speak the language. I'm not going to say anything anymore because the encouragement tonight comes from Emmanuel. And Emmanuel, that's how we're going to wrap up. I know. I know. We want to stay longer and listen more to Adriano, but come to the symposium and talk to him right there in person. Right, Adriano? Yes. <laughs> 
But Because let I'm gonna read there. just a tiny bit, Adriano, before we do the final prayer, asking for vibrations. Chapter 73 of the book Living Spring by Emmanuel. Fraternal Encouragement. He says, And according to his riches in glory, my God will meet all your needs through Christ Jesus. Paul to the Philippians 4.19 Do not think you are alone in the purifying struggle. For the Lord will meet all our needs. Look up to the Almighty. From time to time, look behind you. If you are in a position to serve, then do so and press on. Remember your brothers and sisters who live in indigence without any resources. Think about the mothers and fathers who must listen to their children crying with no means of drying their tears. Observe the sick whose circumstances have taken them from their homes. Stop for a moment and give a friendly look to a homeless child. Emmanuel goes on and on and on, and then he comes to this point. When you manage to overcome your afflictions in order to create joy for others, then other people's happiness will seek you out wherever you may be to bring your happiness of your own. When you plant the joy of living in the hearts around you, then very soon the flowers and fruit of your sowing will enrich your pathway. That's why we're doing this countdown. That's why we're sharing these teachings in the English-speaking language, sharing the joy of living, singing the songs of joy according to the good news and the promised consoler. So, Adriano, we need to ask you, can you please wrap this beautiful conversation? We're only 13 days away, but we need to pray together to ask for protection, good vibrations, inspiration, and strength to all and everyone who is going to work there and those who are going to come and attend in both realms of light. Can we do this? Yes, we can. Thank you. All right. Um... Let us... Focus more now in our inner space, the most sacred space of our spirit, there where the sea of the greatest love of all lies, where God has put it when he created us to burst out throughout our journey through reincarnation to reincarnation burst in our life through our actions through our living and let us look as well to the be deepest reaches of the universe where God as well has put his love. Our mighty Father, creator of the universe that maintains everything in balance, we know that your love is spread throughout all this infinite space that connects us within. Lord, we are thankful for your blessings towards our planet, towards human beings, towards us this moment. Thank you for bringing us together at this moment for this prayer. And we want your love to embrace us and connect us to the greatest source that is you, to the source of energy that is spreads to the universe, 
to fulfill our souls with courage, with hope, perseverance, giving up his strength to go on, march on, in whatever circumstances that lies ahead of us, despite any challenge, we know that you are providing us with strength and energy. We feel your presence in us. We feel that you love us much. And we feel great by feeling that we remember those ones spread through this planet that are suffering, especially those ones that are yet don't know your love, yet don't know your teachings. May they receive our greatest thoughts. They may as well feel a little bit of love that we are receiving now. And with this symposium, that many hands, many minds, and the both realms of life are joining together to make it happen. May you, Lord, prepare our spirits to serve you humbly, to keep in mind that if we connect to you, the source, and then we are filled with the need to do. Lord, please as well, prepare every heart, every spirit incarnate and discarnate that will go to this symposium. They may beforehand be prepared, be visited by one of your messengers. So by the time that we are all joined together in this event, we feel connected, we feel sympathy for each other, we feel brotherhood and sisterhood as a great family. And please, Jesus, our greatest master, be with us, helping us overcome our weaknesses and really, really using our best to the best of the people, our brothers and sisters, and so be it. Amen. What a joy, Adriano. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adriano, for being with us. Thank you. For your time, for your effort, and hope to see you soon. In DC, right, Rudy? Thank you, Enilda. Thank you, Amanda Andrade, Nora Brazil, all of your friends. And don't forget, National Day of Spiritism on April 18th. Please record your prayers in your phone. Send it to info at spiritist.us. It's a 24-hour day of uh, prayers and messages. You can read a message. Say a prayer, just say the prayer, just read the message. It doesn't have limit of time. Of course, we wouldn't go too long because we need more people to occupy also the 24 hours. But invite other friends as well and join in, okay? Thank you, Adriano. Thank you, friends. And until tomorrow, God willing, we'll be back with another day on the countdown for the 12th U.S. Spiritist Symposium. Thank you, friends.